We are back with another video. So exciting! My name is Shakia. I'm currently visiting family, fun time. And today I practice reconnection by doing some grounding exercises. Um, so I did go outside this morning and I had my book. I sat down in the grass and, you know, read my book. But because I was connected to the earth, I felt more grounded. If you are new to this channel, hello and welcome to this series titled Hope and Expression. I am a licensed educator, an artist, and a keynote speaker. I'm a safe space, and I'm also an advocate for holistic care in inpatient medical facilities. That's a little bit more about me. As promised, Today, I am going to go over very briefly, um, but I hope even in its brevity, I'll be able to provide some clarity in how to, how to find an objective truth. If we think back to the previous interviews, there was a section on connection. The first question in that section was, is there someone you've lost connection with by way of maybe not speaking to them anymore, or there being a misunderstanding. The second question was, what is the reason for this fallout? And that would be your subjective truth from your perspective. The follow-up prompt was to turn that subjective truth into an objective truth. A great resource for this, by the way, can be found if you go to cnvc.org which is the Center for Nonviolent Communication. This website is about nonviolent communication, which is an approach to communication that someone named Marshall Rosenberg speaks about, where it's no longer ego versus ego or defense mechanism against defense mechanism. It's an approach to communication that puts compassion and communication at the forefront of the relationship and issue so that all parties can essentially problem solve together. There's a quote on his website that he has that says, There are no positive or negative emotions, just emotions we feel when our needs are met, and emotions when our needs, or emotions that we feel when our needs are unmet. On that website is a PDF for feelings and needs inventory. Feelings and needs are the two main components that you'll need in order to find an objective truth. So you may, for example, go through the PDF and see that there's a list of feelings that arise when needs are met those that are felt when needs are unmet, and also a list of needs. Some feelings that you feel when your needs are met or satisfied include joy, amusement, curiosity, empowerment, and hope. Some feelings that you feel when your needs have not been satisfied include agitation, confusion, alienation, disconnection, and hopelessness. It also lists some feeling words that are synonymous with anger, like feeling livid, irate, or enraged. But it's important to note that when a feeling of anger arises, there are deeper emotions that, that are being masked. So if you find yourself continuously reaching out for that expressed feeling on the inventory, I encourage you to dig deeper. There's something more there. Once you have that feeling and have expressed it honestly to yourself and the other party, you will go to your needs. What did you need in that moment? For example, I could say that I have a need for competence, cooperation, presence, mourning, or choice. When we put it together, it may sound something like this. I feel hurt because my need for inclusion was not met. Or... I feel agitated because I have a need for rest, and not gonna lie, you did not prevent me from sleeping, but I, since I have no sleep, my brain is no longer able to offer the full presence that I would otherwise give, or that I'd like to give. So you have your feeling, need, and then request for the present or future moment. Afterwards, the other party is given the space to do the same, and we're practicing active listening when we do this, right? We're not putting the feeling on the other person by saying, you made me feel livid. That's not really putting compassion and humanness at the forefront of the conversation. We're trying to figure out what we're feeling, which need is unmet, and 
then that, that unmet need is causing us to feel this certain way. Once everything is expressed in its entirety, then we can bring ourselves back to the present moment by problem solving together and reflecting on what is needed in the moment. So bringing back that example of needing sleep and feeling agitation. I feel agitated because my need for rest or sleep, which is under the umbrella of physical well-being, is not being met. So in actuality, what I require in this moment is some space so that I can take a nap and come back to this conversation with a fresh mind. Can we pick up this conversation in two hours once I've rested? It's important to be specific about that, that request for the present or future. So you have your feeling, again, need, request for present and or future, and that is a way to find an objective truth. If you're feeling maybe a bit apprehensive about bringing it up, you could practice it by way of role playing with another person. Ideally, it's someone who's removed from the situation and can offer an objective perspective. So you would keep being yourself and the other person would play the role of the other individual and you'd say, I feel X, Y, Z because I have a need for A, B, C. <laughs> and the other person would try to think, okay, why would this person act this way or do this thing? What's the other perspective for this misalignment? Yes, I hope that helps. Right now, I do have, what do I have with me? I have a cup of mostly water, and it has a whisper of cranberry juice in it. <laughs> so I'm going to take a sip, and then we are going to start our interview. Okay, so today's hopes are shared by a hopeful named Silver. Hello, hello, hope you're doing well. Let's get into it. What would you say hope feels like? Being hit by a curveball, falling down, and discovering a hidden gem that helps you bounce back like a rubber band. What's the last thing you hoped for? A lasting relationship. Do you remember a time losing hope? Yes, several times. When I divorced, when I was told my posts would be continued in the middle of COVID, is there a person you've lost connection with that you're hesitant in reaching back out to? An old partner who is disloyal and lost my trust. Tito, the father to my 16-year-old daughter. Why is your relationship with the person mentioned in question four frayed? Now, this hopeful did not mention um, why the relationship is frayed, so they did not give a subjective truth. How can you frame it in an objective way? The experience taught me to guard my heart. I learned to fill my cup before pouring out my coffee. Through investing in myself, I emerged a better version of myself. I've channeled my energy in, into mentoring others to strive to be better versions of themselves in teams I have led. <clears throat> in the words of Henry Ford, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. They also have not mention what they would come back as once they are reincarnated. So we're going to skip that question. What is your most comfortable mode of expression and communication? Are you able to use it with those around you? Or do you find it necessary to change how you express yourself with others? One-on-one -on -one conversations and online presentations. I believe I can develop my keynote speech. I just need to be clear on my message craft the message, and practice delivery. I speak fast and others often ask me to repeat myself. I need to slow down. With some effort and practice, there would be no need to change how I speak if I can slow down. They also asked at the end how I would use the survey results. And so yeah, if you've noticed and have been following along, Twice weekly, I've been sharing insightful and inspiring video interviews that delve into hope, expression, and community across the globe. Um, and then I share it on this YouTube page. And that's because I believe that understanding the diverse expressions of intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships is key to not only fostering empathy, but also connection and positive change. In other words, I'm 
by speaking about these things and getting your different perspectives. I'm hoping that this can be shared so that we can together be able to start maintaining and creating healthy and viable communities, starting with us, starting with our view on the world and how we perceive things, right? In order to be our best selves, we need to know ourselves. And so we got to put the work in. How are we seeing these things? Is that affecting how we're creating and maintaining these connections? So that's what this series is about. If you've made it thus far, I am very grateful that you're here. I'm very grateful that you're still listening. I think that when thinking of why I appreciate you guys listening so much, it's difficult to pinpoint just because there are a lot of needs that are being met by this. Not only my need for self-expression and growth, but also contribution, right? Contribution to our society, contribution to your life, my life their lives, authenticity, my need for presence. Um, So yeah, there's a lot of needs that are being met by you guys listening and supporting and taking in these perspectives and seeing what you can do in your own lives with it. So there you go. I will speak to you all next time, hopefully. Until then, (laughs) stay you, stay fly and stay hydrated. Your brain will thank you.